Hello and welcome to Reality TV Cringe. I am one of your hosts, the old ho. (laughs) My name is Delia and I'm here with my real tight homegirl and my daughter-in-law and young ho. Young ho. Beatrice. (laughs) Hi everybody. We are here to talk Sister Wives Season 19 Episode 7, the episode of open mouth tongue kissing honey. Girl. So much of it. Yeah. And little truly. (laughs) Trying to cock block the entire time, which I love. Based. Yes. Before we get into it, we do have to issue you a disclaimer, please. Hide your wife and hide your kids. This is a politically incorrect podcast. We say a lot of bad words. Mm-hmm. We have dumb opinions oh, and yeah. we love to shout them from the dumpster. Of course we do. So if you're sensitive, you might want to find yourself another dumpster baby. But if you're down to party and get into these browns and into these wedding venues. Girl. Welcome to this dumpster. <laughs> and if you are down to party with us, be sure to follow us on Instagram at Reality TV Cringe and join us on Patreon, <gasps> patreon.com slash reality TV Cringe. That's where the real party's at. Okay. And if you are following us on YouTube, first of all, thank you so thank you. much. We finally made 4,000. We announced it last week and then we partied, we celebrated, yep. we blacked out. <laughs> <laughs> we were so excited about yeah. it. Thank you. Please don't forget to like and comment and share and subscribe because every single thing you do helps us to grow in the algorithm. Thank you. So thank you in advance. Appreciate it. Okay. It is time now. It is time, bitch. To get into the episode. Once again, season 19, episode 7, entitled Labor of Love. Was that what it was? Yep. You a labor it. of love. Yeah. So Cody showing up mm-hmm. to help his spurned wife who got none of his attention and none of his money and the smallest piece of land, his labor of love yes. is showing up so he can move the furniture to give to her useless brother-in-law, <laughs> Nathan. Sorry. Oh, my God. Time stamp that. Oh I've got it. Hold on. <laughs> Nathan. <laughs> and where did we see him? What was he in the earlier seasons? I can't remember him. I like he he's he very was in last familiar. He was in last season when Cody was deep in his red pill manosphere. Was it last season? I hate my wives and I want to do bad things. And he was sitting with like the round table of beta males oh, trying to yeah. counsel Cody about that. I for some reason I was thinking he was in the rewinds too, but I'm like, I remember that one I no, no, I think he was in Rewinds. I think he's been around for quite some time. He's been well, married to Mary's sister for a while, but I'm like, oh, God. I mean. I didn't need to see Nathan again. No, and she doesn't look too happy herself. I'm just going to be real right Mary there. or Rebecca? Rebecca. Would you be happy? No. If you were married to <laughs> Nathan? Absolutely not. God, get your fucking... <laughs> <laughs> get your fucking frowning patronizing face (laughs) sitting across from mary well are you sure about that well i mean do you mean it when you say your marriage is broken you dope (laughs) like you have eyes at least you could have seen you could have seen what's been going on this is so bad you're gonna have to go (laughs) but i mean nathan you're on the wrong side of history you're on the wrong team it's like you're showing up to advocate for cody of course he is simp he gives him a hug and cody's like hello armano i'm Uh, like shut uh, the uh, what is it armano yeah that's what it is yeah that's (laughs) That's my white lady interpretation of what he said something like what's up brother yeah while mary is in the back calling to him cody Hi, Cody. You, Hi, Cody. You, you, Cody. And he's ignoring her. Of, of course. He doesn't have to listen to her ever again. And then he goes and he he hugs Rebecca. Yeah. And he walks right by Mary. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he's like, hey, Mary, what's up? <laughs> like, so disrespectful. Yeah. But please sit on the couch in your talking head and talk about how you tried to make it work. And mm-hmm. you would have faked it with Mary, but you can't even <laughs> give her a hug in this moment. You guys are full on divorce now. Mm-hmm. He's hated her for a long time. And I'm really sad. Yeah. Okay. And I was really shocked when we it happened so ship. quickly. Like, wow, this ship is crashed. <laughs> you know what? feel bad about that yeah do you but anyway yeah yeah but even before he gets there we've got rebecca Mm -hmm. and nate (laughs) 
sitting down on this terrible and in fact dreadful furniture that they horrible. got from the consignment store in Vegas, bitch, which we covered on the Patreon. We did cover on the Patreon. Poor Mary didn't even want to buy this furniture. No. She wanted something more comfy. Practical. More cozy. Yeah. And Cody's like, no, this looks like rich people furniture. Yeah, it has no armrest. And we want to be rich people, yeah. so let's get this furniture. And so she's <laughs> had this terrible shit mm -hmm. in all of her houses yeah. across the years, and she's finally giving it up. And I guess Nate, because he probably doesn't fucking work, no, he's yeah. like, I'll take all of your hand-me-downs. I love Mary, it. Mary, and I'll judge you while I do it. 100%. I'll look down on you and ask you questions about, are you sure you should have divorced this sure about yeah. that? And then he'll go and thank Cody. <gasps> <gasps> Bitch. giving the furniture to them you've made my wife a happy lady i'm You're like such a good guy wait, cody it's not cody's furniture he's just there it's to load mary's it. for he's just there to film a scene that's it that's the only reason he's there so yeah that he can fucking earn a bit of his paycheck otherwise exactly. he's he wouldn't show up no oh my god so nate thinks Cody, God, I hate, I hate these people. I know. He's I hate them shit. so much. I mean, why? Somebody out there, if you're Mormon, could you talk to me a little bit about why Mormon men suck so much? Yeah. I mean, I thought religion was supposed to be about God and love and loving your neighbor and living a life of love, like whatever religion you're a part of. But it just seems to me that all these representations on our TV of Mormon men, they're like terrible fucking patriarchal awful people yeah terrible well ethel says it's because it's it's the it's in the religion i mean they've the men are the only ones that have the priesthood so they're the only ones that are like therefore important the women are just there yeah but like that's in my religion too as a christian like we have the old testament and the new testament we have all of these different hierarchical systems the way that they um set up their churches and stuff like that but that doesn't give me liberty to be a misogynistic asshole piece well, of shit. For sure. I mean, also, Jesus, who I believe the Mormons believe in, they do. talked about how loving your neighbor as yourself was the greatest commandment after loving God. Yeah. Well, because they hide behind their religion. Because if you have a religion and you say you believe in God, then therefore you're a good person. That's what it is. It just It's it, just a mass. It infuriates me. Even a man like Nathan, who uh, seems to have nothing going for him. <laughs> literally you nothing going, in going for today. him he gets to sit in judgment <laughs> of fucking mary uh, yeah. lula Roe, mary right mary bringing in hundreds of thousands of dollars starting a whole new endeavor with worthy up she gonna write a book she owns her own home mm -hmm. and you're here to pick up her used furniture from 15 years ago <laughs> nate and you're gonna sit in judgment of mary yeah oh jesus crackers meanwhile rebecca's trying to contain her excitement like rebecca's happy for mary i think she's like finally I'm so glad you finally see the light mary and you worthied up yeah but nate's just there as a barnacle on rebecca's ship yeah trying to be a voice for cody yeah and make mary feel bad for doing what she was made to do because cody refused to love and take care of her of course and nate you seem to be okay with that yeah because you're a man in mormonism and i guess that's your your position well and you're also like cody's best friend like cody says he's my best friend yeah, so he probably cody. thinks cody's a good guy well i mean cody's like, famous Fucking Nate's only been on one scene, right? So they're not making a lot of money. Well, no, he's been around and I, I, I. He's been across <laughs> I, the different seasons. We've seen a bit of Nate. <laughs> I, I, I. <laughs> oh, my God. I, I, I. I, I didn't... <laughs> Did, I, did not, I just went around i did not mean it that way oh but you know God. what i meant you, you're i did not it. mean it that way you but my, my point stands he's been around <laughs> across seasons so and he, I, 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 I think he's looking for the fame i think he's looking for his paycheck from tlc because he's probably unemployable and he's got nothing going for him in his life i don't know i period if i remember him from last season if he was the guy that was talking about he was cody being a good guy uh -huh. cody doing everything that he could i mean he's a piece of shit nate's a yeah, piece of shit they went for a drive together yeah they were commiserating oh, yeah, right. yeah they were commiserating about how much he hated christine so this guy sucks ass. like i think he tried a little bit to give some perspective to cody because he realized cody was absolutely losing his fucking shit mm -hmm. Um, in front of the nation yeah but yeah no he's a terrible person yeah awful and i feel bad for rebecca but at least you got this bitching ass fallen furniture <laughs> rebecca i hope you enjoy it yeah i hope you because what else have couch. you got going for you oh my the god husband like that for real <laughs> anyway so they're there talking to mary about the dissolution of their marriage and mary's kind of opening up about it 
opening up about the separation. She's like, it's a done deal. I went to the church leaders. Nate does ask, did that go well with the church leaders? Did they give you any flack? And Mary's like, no, I had no issues. It went well for me, yeah. but not necessarily for Cody. Yeah. And Nate doesn't seem to think that's a very good thing to say. No. I think he's a little bit upset on Cody's behalf because Why? it got declared that Cody abandoned her and Nate probably disagrees with that okay yeah so weird it probably he probably does disagree with, with it though because he sees it from Cody's perspective because Cody's going over here on camera to act like he cares about mm-hmm. Mary and he's like yeah no I'm helping I'm helping move the furniture out like I'm helping move my ex-wife out didn't you see I did that with Christine last season I'm a good guy like I'll help him out mm-hmm. Ooh, look yep. at me but it's all just for a camera thing so absolutely performative yeah um and he is forcing this weird good mood as well like right acting as if he's happy to be there which he's not um and he's interacting with Mary but like he can't hide it like the mask still slips because he's like mary get me some water i know just demands her to go get him water and she's like um can you say please and he doesn't he doesn't even say please but she still goes and gets him the water Mm -hmm. maybe if people stopped doing everything he fucking demanded maybe he'd get a clue and stop being such an asshole for real and then we had that weird segment of talking about him being intense Mm -hmm. right and then this is where robin's talking about his resting murder face yeah i call it his murder face because it's really scary and i'm like this is who you're married to. Yeah, no, he's scary, actually. Like, he's actually a scary dude. And if he's aggressive like that and has a resting murder face, as you call it, like, why are you with him? While he's talking to your children and I putting mean, them to bed or putting them into pajamas, according to you. I mean, in just the footage from the last three seasons of the dude. way he's almost violently spoken about these wives that have mm-hmm. ultimately left him. I mean, Robin, it's not a resting murder face. It's a murder face. Yeah. He's telegraphing murder. I mean, last season we were talking about him being possessed by a demon because his eyes were like black for Mm -hmm. the entire season. So, I mean, this guy's scary. Yeah. But also I think Janelle was saying in her talking head that he didn't used to always be this guy. All the wives were talking about how he used to be kind of happy-go-lucky. He's always been kind of intense. But this guy that he's turned into now is not the same one that they all married and subsequently divorced. Which I think Mary also says to Nate and to Mm -hmm. Rebecca, and Nate says something stupid like, well, the guy you marry isn't the guy you divorce. Okay, thanks, Nate. Shut up. Thanks for your astute perceptions. Really helpful here. (laughs) Like, God, we don't need Nate and Rebecca. No, we don't. But they're there for filler, and they're there to kind of talk about the divorce and their separation. Mary also talks about, like how Cody and her disagree about the time in which their marriage started to fall apart. Yes, apparently, recently, Cody had phoned her, Uh and they started to get into an argument in which they brought up the catfish. Well, he said, well, at the time of the catfish is when my feelings changed for you. Yeah. And she's like, well, actually, no, for me, it was well before that. And so Cody started getting upset, and she ended up just hanging up the phone call. Based. But she was explaining to Nate and Rebecca, like, it was well before that. What about the things that you said to me? that led up to the catfish and then did you notice nothing else yeah crickets yeah like this is the shit that i want to hear about right this is the stuff i really want you to elaborate on yes mary as well as like your legal marriage for example and how that made you feel and feeling like you didn't have any power and like cody said you had all this power okay let's talk about that that's the interesting stuff that we're always speculating on as the audience that you guys never really address and here you're just like throwing out little bits of it and then pulling it back why and then pulling it back and talking about the furniture again i mean they do talk about the legal divorce and how mary begrudgingly admits it that that's where everything started to change and janelle tried to warn her about it and she ignored her and now she knows janelle was right and it was a difficult time for mary during this legal divorce because her and cody were also struggling and Mm -hmm. having a hard time in their marriage so she had all of these conflicting feelings and everything going on and cody interpreted her being upset by that as her losing her power as the first wife Mm -hmm. this is where mary says in this episode i didn't realize i had any power Mm -hmm. now i wanted to talk to you about that a little bit because i'm like (laughs) what do you mean you were the first wife and from all the other wives You were like the most outspoken. You were pretty controlling. Like you had to have known that you did have a bit of a status. For a period of time. I think in the beginning when they 
onboarded Janelle and then they onboarded Christine. I think for a period of time, maybe those first few years, Mary did conduct herself like the head bitch in charge. Mm -hmm. But I think my feeling is that she was put into her place fairly early on. I think Mm -hmm. she got into it with Janelle. I think she had skirmishes with Christine. Mm -hmm. I think that set the equilibrium to be what it is. I think it was when when, uh, Robin came into the home and she got her ring melted down and she realized, holy shit, Cody really loves this girl. That's when she felt a real shift in her position. I don't know about power. Yeah. I don't know if she even had power then when Robin came on because I'm not sure she really wanted Robin to, although the way it's presented in season one, it was Mary who made the introduction between Robin and Cody. But I think Cody, I mean, I think Robin had her eyes on Cody well before that. And I don't really think Mary wanted it because she gets very emotional about it in season one she cries about it in mexico yeah she talks about being jealous and whatnot so even in that situation she didn't have a lot of power so i would argue from the beginning of the show at least she didn't have power so i think she's right in what she's saying so cody i guess cody thought she did Hmm. but i don't think she really i think she had position and yeah. place, but I don't think that necessarily means power. Maybe that's Robin's words speaking maybe. through him. Yes. Like maybe Robin sees it as like a power structure and a hierarchy because we've always talked about Robin wanting to be the queen bee. Robin wanted to be the favorite wife. She didn't want to be the only wife. She just wanted to be the number one. That's why she got the legal marriage. Mm-hmm. That's why she gets the bigger house. That's why she's got Cody all the time. So maybe that's what it is. And maybe also Robin is bringing in her trauma from her mother having Mm -hmm. to live separately from the other wives and the other family. And so she's seeing that as sort of a power dynamic that she's then projecting onto Mary and the family. Mm. Who fucking knows? At the end of the day, though, did Mary have any power? No. No. She ended up giving up her legal marriage, which I think she was bullied into. Yeah, They try to present it as if Mary came up with that on her own and she's doing this altruistic thing. But no, I think she was pressured by Cody to do it. Yeah. So she really never did have any power. She was really just always trying to maintain a position in the family, constantly reassuring everybody, even when they go to Flagstaff. She's constantly saying, no, I want to move with you. Yeah. Or no, I want right. to be here. No, I want a piece of property. Like she's always trying to tell them, I want a place in this family. Right. Because she knows that she's losing her place in the family. Yeah, because she's been slowly pushed mm-hmm. out. And so that's why she does bring up the catfish thing being like, no, that didn't, that wasn't the end of our marriage right there. It was way before that because all of this other shit happened before now did the divorce happen before the catfish we asked this like last season and somebody answered in our comments and i've already forgotten but i want to <laughs> say the catfish was after was after the divorce. i think the catfish that makes sense. it could have been before though i'm sure somebody would let will let us know they in the comments like, probably actually, the same person who told yeah. us last year i forget i forget too. yeah but I it was around it the same time it was proximate those two things were proximate mm. to each other god what a mess but yeah like those like little nuggets that mary dropped this episode were so good Mm -hmm. and then the rest of it was just stupid it was bullshit and i was wondering did production like edit out some of that conversation because it seems to me mary was going somewhere Mm -hmm. when she brought up the catfish which means if production did edit that out does that mean that cody and robin have a lot of power over production because the only person who wouldn't want her to expound on what really happened and led up to the catfish incident would be Cody and or Cody and Robin and many people think Robin was complicit in the catfish situation Mm, right just like these little bits that she's throwing out that are so important Mm -hmm. and then never expounded upon or expanded on I'm like "Mm, I feel like somebody's editing that I mean they're totally editing it out and we're gonna see it next year (laughs) we're gonna see it next season because that's what they do they use bits and pieces of old footage it's like the stuff with christine and david looking at their wedding venues i'm like this is shit from last who cares nobody gives a shit so i don't know they're probably piecing it all together to just keep us on the the hook i don't think they're piecing it together beatrice i think they're omitting it because cody doesn't want it in there why would we listen and i also think mary is caping for cody still i don't think mary at this point wants to embarrass cody or embarrass robin and so she's still taking great pains not to say anything that's super negative about it i'm just like oh my god get over it already i don't know in the scenes themselves yeah she's trying to be careful but like in her talking heads i mean she's kind of opening up a little bit like last week Mm -hmm. she was talking about cody getting all pissed off about the abandonment word you know from the church leaders and she's like well yeah sorry 
people don't like the truth, but it's the truth. Like, right. So she is speaking her mind a little bit in the talking heads. It's mm-hmm. just these scenes that we're seeing from two years ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That are difficult. Right. It's hard to reconcile those two things. Yeah. It's hard as a viewer. Like if I hadn't yeah. been following it like a rabid raccoon in a dumpster <laughs> right. for so many years, I'd be like, what's going on? Right. Like you're contradicting yourself like multiple times in the same episode, much less the season. I don't know what is happening here. Yeah. It's really hard to follow all of this shit. Yeah. It's annoying. And then what else happens in all of this? Oh, Cody kind of talks about Janelle. Yeah. To Nate and Rebecca and says, Janelle doesn't want to have a relationship with me. Right. As if you want to. You don't care. You just want the money. Mixed messages there as well because he said, like, I can love her again. And he's also said that I I loved her. And then he says, I don't love her. So who knows what's going on with that? But all we can glean is that Janelle doesn't even want to talk to him. Like, I have no interest whatsoever, sir, to talk to you about anything unless it's Coyote Pass and unless it's you running me my money. Yeah. I don't want to have a conversation with you. Yeah. Which blows Cody away because he can't imagine a world where somebody wouldn't want to be around him him right i kind of love how janelle is handling it Mm -hmm. because mary is clearly still in love with cody in my opinion oh yeah i would even argue christine is a little bit still a little bit connected to cody if not totally in love with cody because of the way she's constantly speaking to the camera about cody yeah like if you were over him we wouldn't be hearing so much from you about that but janelle Janelle is over it, honey. Oh, she don't like, give a shit. Peace out. I'm going to North Carolina. I'm yep. going to grow flowers. I'm going to hang out with my grandbabies. Mm. I hope I never see you again. <laughs> For real. I love that. Me too. I wish she would talk more about it, though. Like, I wish she would, like, spill some tea, some financial tea. I wish she would be more willing to, like, say the dirty parts. Sure. That'd be great. But you know what? I love that she just doesn't give a fuck. Mm -hmm. Even in her interviews now in 2024, she is kind of careful. Like she doesn't want to talk shit about Cody. She'll spill a little bit every now and then, but she still is maintaining that like, I don't give a shit attitude. Yeah. And even being a little bit gracious Mm -hmm. toward Cody, because I think a recent interview asked Christine and Janelle, like name one word that describes Cody. Christine said deadbeat. Yeah. And Janelle said charismatic. Yeah. So I'm like, we don't need to be so generous toward the man who deeply wounded your children and is continuing to do so to this day. Yeah. Like, what are we doing? Maybe she's protecting relationships with her kids that still want to stay connected to Cody. Girl, I don't know. This is all conjecture. Yeah. I don't know. That's, That's the part that pisses me off about Janelle and all these women. I'm like, just drag him. Through the mud. Drag him. Please. You know all of the secrets. You know how, you know who he really is. Like, just say it. Be so awesome. Okay. And so we wrap up the Cody and Mary show with getting all the furniture loaded up into the trailer so that Nate can have, Nate can give his wife a gift of new furniture, (laughs) old furniture, because Nate is a loser. Yeah. We did forget about Cody's Sonny and Cher comment. Oh, God. I'm sorry. Well... It's because I blotted it from my consciousness. <laughs> like, who fucking cares? Literally, who cares, Cody? I mean, that's literally him trying to, like, give his origin story. His, like, sad origin story of, like, yeah, I was so traumatized by Sonny and Cher's divorce that I didn't want to divorce these three women that I apparently didn't love and I was disgusted by and I hated being with. I didn't want to divorce them because divorce is so traumatizing to me. That's what he's trying to say with this Sonny and Cher comment, as if we buy that. It's so bizarre. It's so weird. And there are so many other relationships that have broken up mm-hmm. due to divorce. The Prince Charles and Diana. I don't know. Let's get into the modern century. And right. Talk. Like Sonny and Cher? Yeah. Sonny and Cher. Well, because he was six. It imprinted five. on him. Oh, yeah. I was five. five. <laughs> okay, what are we doing here? I like, know. That was the first time I ever realized that marriages could break up. <laughs> And I just couldn't believe that Sonny and Cher got a divorce. Oh, my God. Okay, I don't care. I mean, that's wild. Like, wh- where is he getting that from? I don't know. But how does that inform what you've done? I mean, if you didn't believe in divorce, if it was such a heartbreaking thing for you, then why have you conducted yourself in such a terrible way towards the women who were your wives? I don't know. And then he talks about eternal marriage. Yeah. And how he just doesn't believe in that anymore because it's offensive to him. Yes. It's offensive that he would have to be stuck with these women for eternity. But he also says that about Christine. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm offended for her that she would have to be stuck with me even though I'm a 
God. Mm -hmm. That she'd have to be stuck with me when her soulmate could be out there. So that was kind of interesting. It was interesting. That says to me that that is an interstitial or a talking head that was filmed more currently Mm. as opposed to two years ago because he's starting to settle down. But I mean, he's still talking about how he can't conceive of a God who would force him to suffer to spend eternity with with these three women and stay married to them. It's like... Well, Dude. you're the one who chose these women. Right. You can deny it all you want. You can say that you never loved them, that they forced their, they busted their way in like the Kool-Aid man into your marriages. Yeah. Because they wanted to be a part of your situation. You can continue to say that, but God didn't come down from his throne and stand before you and tell you, you have to marry these women. That was you. You made that choice. You did that. Right. But it's another way for him to deflect blame and not take any ownership for it because if he can say it was religion or obligation like when he says about christine i married her out of a sense of obligation then he can take some of the heat off of him it's not entirely his fault and he didn't want to divorce them out of the good graces of his own heart because he was so traumatized (gasps) by sonny and jerry I, I just don't I don't need I don't know it's, it's so like crazy I can just see him and Robin like having meetings and oh, talk and have totally. like a, a notepad and a pen out and talk about all of the talking points that they're going to bring up like let's talk about Sonny and Cher because yeah. they got a divorce and maybe you can say that it totally traumatized you maybe yeah. that's the reason blah 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 <laughs> yeah. and maybe we could have this scene where we're filming outside and I could be confronting you about how you're not talking to your kids and like people would totally believe that Cody They'll buy it yeah that's exactly what they're doing mm-hmm. after every single episode while she's high on Ambien. Yeah. <laughs> Filling in her brows, honey. So good. Filling in her brows. 100%. All right. So now we'll get to okay. Christine and David. All right. Going to the winning venues. They went to f- the first one and it was too small because they have a possibility of having 700 guests. I know. Which we know is a bunch of bullshit. Right. We saw the wedding special. You had like 300 or well, something. Well, they are talking about their extended family and we are dealing with Mormons, honey. Mormons. And the Mormons <laughs> have a lot of extended family. Yeah, I guess. So I can see where they'd have 700 guests, but they're going to try and keep it to 300. The first venue wasn't even able to accommodate that obviously yeah. at the second venue they're able to do it and we already know because we already watched we saw it. the wedding that that is where they go so like who cares about any of that let's right. just talk about the pda god and truly what are your thoughts so much pda it was so much like truly okay her behavior was a little odd to me because mm-hmm. it was m- striking as like she was acting out like she is trying to separate christine and david at every turn she is pushing christine Mm -hmm. like shoving her out the door like she's physically acting out i'm not saying that that's like necessarily like bad i don't want to like harp on truly but christine downplays that so much she's like oh it's just because she wants me to hug her tighter like she just she's separating us because she wants Mm -hmm. me to hug her more and it's like yeah okay dive into that a little bit more Mm -hmm. like why is she so uncomfortable with you and david making out literally you're sucking on his face i mean you're opening your mouth i can hear your tongue noises oh my god i can hear your macaroni and cheese noises (laughs) they can hear it from like 20 feet away yeah why do we need to do all of that in front of your 12-year-old child who clearly is acting out? Yeah. And we can have a conversation about whether that means that truly is troubled or maybe it means that truly feels really comfortable. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. But at the same time, do we really need to do it, though? Mm. Maybe we could just dial it back and right. give him a peck on the cheek and just keep it, like, casual. Yeah. But no. No. Christine is a perpetual teenager. It's She's so living bad. her teenage girl fantasy. It's so cringe. And this is why people on Reddit are arguing and calling mm-hmm. each other cunts because right. a lot of people are defending Christine and saying, like, well, she didn't get to have that romance. Like, let her live. You know, this is her first time ever experiencing affection. And I'm like, look, that's totally fine. Mm-hmm. I'm glad. I'm so happy. She's getting her back blown out by David, I guess. I'm glad that it's so great. I'm glad you guys are making out. You guys are hanging out in hot tubs. Like, that's awesome. I love that for you. I want that for you. But when your kids are uncomfortable and, like, visibly uncomfortable. I mean, Isabel looked, like, pained every time that they were making out. She's like, Physically, she would turn away. Yeah. And so would Max. Yeah. Like, they are all uncomfortable with this, and yet you're still doing it. Mm -hmm. Making out, like, so so much i mean the tongue yeah it's just i don't know i I, i'm wondering why 
Christine is doing this. And I think at the end of the day, I think that she's just really, really excited to be yeah, with somebody for sure. that she's sexually attracted to, that she feels like such a profound connection with. And she just wants to express that. Sure. She's never been in a relationship where she's been able to be affectionate in this way. We have Isabel actually speaking to camera about that. She's like, I'm just not used to it. Yeah. Because quite frankly, all I've ever seen is my mom and my dad. And like, that's just not how they existed together. Like they didn't even hold hands. And so to see my mom this way with somebody like she deserves that and I want that, but that doesn't negate the fact that it makes me uncomfortable. Yep. Exactly. And so people are calling out Isabel because like, just let Christine live and you're an adult. You should be able to do that. But I mean, okay, but <sighs> Isabel is also a child. Yep. Isabel is also her child. This is her first experience with this mother, this version of Christine. Mm -hmm. Let her have a period of adjustment. Plus, she's being really gracious toward the camera for her mom. She really is. And she's saying this like, you know, David's a great guy. He treats my mom really well, as he should. And he makes my mom really happy. And I'm really happy about it. But it's just... A little too fast. Like, that's all Isabel says. Mm -hmm. So I'm surprised that people are coming for Isabel mm -hmm. for saying that shit and saying, let your mom live. Um, no, it's okay to be uncomfortable about it when your mom is making out with somebody mm -hmm. after six whole weeks, already said I love you after a week, and is looking at wedding venues when you're not even engaged yet. Right, which is also so wild to me. That's crazy to me. So they're looking at venues, and they've been together, according to Christine, anywhere from six to eight weeks. Uh -huh. Now, I will tell you, when I met my husband, sure. who I fell in love with very quickly, yes. we were taking our rides in the Colorado mountains in those first couple of months just dreaming about where we were going to live and yeah, how we were going to live sure. and talking about things like that we weren't looking at venues or anything but then we wouldn't have cared about something like that so I can see I can see and especially given their culture and how fast they move anyway and also their age they're ready to just make the move I can see why, the, why they're looking for venues but like do we need to bring the kids along like no. does Isabel really need to be there no I can see why truly would because she's a minor child and you need to be her guardian so she's got to be there but I guess. Isabel and Max, they don't seem like they want to be there. No. And I mean, the older kids could watch Truly. Like, it's not like Truly's five years old. I mean, she's 14 or something mm -hmm. like that. Like, she could stay home. And you guys could have your moment and not have it be interrupted. And I understand why they want to, like, include the kids. They want to, like... You yeah, know, but they don't try... seem happy about no, it. No, they're super uncomfortable. Like, include the kids that are very excited about what's coming up. Like, I think right. David has some of those kids. But yeah. they even mention it. And in the preview, they mention how not all of Christine's kids are on the same page about mm -hmm. David. Gwen. Some probably. of them are. So take the ones that are. Right. And maybe leave behind Truly. Because for whatever reason, she seems to be going through some changes about it. Yeah. And I totally get it. I sympathize with little Truly. I know you do. I've been there. I know. Should we talk about it more? I don't know. I just, look, I'm looking at Christine and David and I'm thinking about my mom and my stepdad. Who I know. Were very similar like that. I mean, they were way worse. <laughs> well, there were actually but people talking on Reddit about how... A version of this kind of PDA, not this specifically, but a version of this kind of PDA um, taken a few steps further is actually a form of abuse. Yeah. Like exposing your young minor children to sexually expressive forms of affection mm -hmm. is, a, is a way to actually traumatize them, oh, especially yeah. if they don't have context and really understand what the fuck is going on, mm -hmm. which I know is something that happened with you yep. that did actually legitimately traumatize you on a therapeutic level like yep. you're still going to therapy for it because yep. your parents did that so there's like a, there's like shades to this of course. i don't think that's what christine's doing i hope not. certainly nothing that we are seeing would rise to the level of being abusive and sure. too sexually overt to damage truly but like we don't know what's happening when the cameras are off and uh -huh. we don't know how much Christine is enjoying that king size bed Girl, and how yeah. close Truly's room is to that king size bed and what she might be hearing and what she might be absorbing. Mm -hmm. And so I think people are just generally concerned. And then you've got the other contingent of people are like, how fucking dare you? Christine is just falling in love. She's kissing her man. Just let her be in this moment without judging her and calling it abuse. So you've got like the spectrum of totally people. yeah raccoons out here honey well and i mean only people who have been through it are mm -hmm. worried about it and judging it you know sure. what i mean like i look at this through the lens of my own life and i'm like ooh, i hope you're not being disgusting i hope you're not you know exposing your kids to all your nasty and your pet you know what i mean mm -hmm. i hope christine's not doing that i'm sure christine is keeping it innocent i'm sure she's just making out a lot i'm sure they're just 
cuddling and stuff. But when you're saying shit on TV and in front of your kids about how you don't give a fuck if they're uncomfortable and you don't care if they don't like it because you're going to continue to do it no matter what. That's the issue Mm -hmm. that I have a problem with and a lot of other people on Reddit have a problem with. Like you don't need to say that shit. You don't need to do that. And Mm -hmm. if you know your kids are uncomfortable, why are you doing it? I mean, really, why? You're Mm -hmm. just being selfish. And like, I get it. Like people on Reddit are like, well, she didn't get to have the teenage romance. Like when we were all teenagers and we brought home our first real boyfriend or real girlfriend home and we were making out with them constantly. Like, I get it. I've been there. You've been there. Mm -hmm. It's cringe. But you're a 50 year old woman now. Like you have wisdom. You have age of experience you could try to hide that a little bit and try to be conscious of other people's feelings about it Mm -hmm. that's all yeah like I can look back on my life and I can say wow there are a lot of experiences and conditions that I never got to have like I I wasn't able to to do some things and if I got the opportunity to do them now maybe I would maybe I wouldn't but I wouldn't be out here acting a fool I would still be the big age that I am I would still have children I would still have debts and a home and things that I've got to take care of I'm still an adult out here at this age so I'm not going to act a fool right so uh, sometimes when I watch Christine I just feel like it's a trauma response I feel like it's a response to the 20 some odd years of what I would call an abusive neglect certainly neglectful relationship yeah with Cody Brown and I think a lot of people are trying to say that this that's what it could be yeah and then you have other people saying well abuse is an explanation it's not an excuse Mm, neglect is an explanation it is not an excuse for bad behavior right but does this rise to the level of bad behavior that's the question why don't you guys let us know dm beatrice let us know in the comments on youtube whether you think it's inappropriate for christine or not i'm riding the lightning on it i'm like eh it, it's it's all right it's cringe i don't think it's like the level of abuse i would really hope it's not mm-hmm. i mean i'm sure the kids are fine it's not abuse objectively it's at not, this point like it's not at all it's just cringy like mm-hmm. nobody wants to see you making including out with your husband. the audience of sister wives i mean oh my god none of us want to see that i watched it twice and i'm like i can't does anybody out there really want to see that no. i mean i know a lot of us are okay to all right okay we'll see it but i, I don't, don't want to see that i don't want to see it and you know what if we're gonna see it can the producers just turn off the mic Oh God! While I hate, they're making out, I have misophonia. I know you do. I, was I thinking have about you. misophonia, honey. So when they're kissing and oh I'm hearing God. all of the saliva noises, I'm getting triggered. <sighs> do you know what? Sidebar. What? I actually just got a wild hair when I was thinking about my misophonia because I was listening to my husband fucking chew. And I'm just like, <laughs> oh my God, I want to tell him to shut up. And But yeah. he was not being inappropriate. It was mm-hmm. my problem. I actually Googled it, whether misophonia was a trauma response or for people who have been abused and traumatized, is misophonia something that comes out of that? And it is. It is. Oh my God. It is. It is a trauma response that would make sense it makes a lot of sense like just not liking any kind of noise Mm -hmm. oh my gosh or a specific kind of noise oh yeah i'm sorry no that's okay so like i'm hearing christine make out with david woolley a 60 year old man on an arch in moab i'm like i'm getting triggered (laughs) jesus crackers i was getting triggered and i don't even have a tremor i was just like please stop yeah like i'm so glad you're happy i really am and i want everybody to hear that from my voice. Like, I don't want you coming in the comments, coming after me, being like, Beatrice, she's such a bitch. Let Christine live. Look, I, I that's great. Oh I just God. don't want to see them make out. Like, is that okay? Like, I just don't want to see two 50-something-year-olds make out on my TV. Okay. You know what I mean? Uh, we validate that for you. Thank you. You're for welcome. validating that for my experience. <laughs> yeah. But no, I was triggered the entire time. Me too. Nate! <laughs> triggered me (laughs) and christine and david christine and david triggered me i mean too much but i'm glad that he's given her the big wedding that she yes she does deserve it she gets to walk down that aisle she gets to have her moment and we're gonna cheer her on yep you go christine you go girl get to the preview preview so we have mary seeing the carriage house right um parowan on her birthday okay lonely uh david coming over for dinner at christine's house and some of her kids are kind of not into it Mm mm-hmm we have Janelle calling Robin Cody's sacred cow. Oh, yeah. And asks how she could be in a relationship with him when he literally worships her. Wow. Uh, I love it. And then Cody responding and saying Janelle plays the victim card. Yeah. Which is hilarious mm-hmm. because only one wife does that 
and it's your wife, Robin. It is Robin. <laughs> yes, I want to. I want to get to that conversation with Janelle and Cody yes. at that weird restaurant where they have to eat in an attic. Salsa that, Robin. That's what I want. I can't wait to get there. <laughs> Me too. Well, this was an interesting week. Yeah, a lot of good call-ins. Mm-hmm. Some interesting newsworthy items, and we made the most of that episode. We did. Yeah, and what those editors gave us. God, turn shit into gold. Is there anything else that we need to say to these beautiful raccoons before we get up on out of here, BHS? Well, if you love our podcast, I sure hope you go to your favorite podcast platform and leave us a glowing five-star review. It really ah! helps us grow the pod. We want to get famous over here, so thank you in advance. We are not going to be back later this week because no, this is the only show we are covering yeah. right now. I asked her whether she wanted to cover a thousand pound friends, but she's just like, I've never watched that in my life. I've never watched it. Didn't they all get skinny? Like, who cares? Are. are they even fat? <laughs> I'm like I don't I think I think they're getting some new big people and I oh think there's God. some drama with the new skinny people. Oh my God. But Beatrice isn't into it. And so the next show that I know we're going to add to the roster is 90 Day Fiance, The Last Resort. Oh my God. Oh my God. Stacy of Darcy yes! and Stacy is going to be there. I can't wait. Yeah, there's going to be some good couples, but that Gino doesn't and Oh God, that's going to be wild. Can't wait. That doesn't start until beginning of December though. Yeah. So we gotta so wait. Until then, we're just having one pot a week. Yeah. We hope that's okay. But never forget that we have nothing but love for you. And until next time, peace out. Bye. Bye, guys.